Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Surrounding Downsall Physics. In today's session, guys, we're going to be talking about forces and elasticity and looking at Hooke's Law. So put down today's title, it's going to be Forces and Elasticity and Hooke's Law. And before we get going, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to keep my channel going and keep my content as free as possible. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so over here, guys, here I've got a clamp stand over here. Hopefully you see these at school. And I've got a spring. This is my spring attached to it. So this is my spring over here. Cool stuff. Now, guys, let's uh, label the original length. So let's say the spring, there's nothing attached to it. This is the original length L, lowercase l. So let's put that down. L, let's say, is the original length over here. Then we're going to simply add um, a mass to the end of the spring. And obviously that mass will drag the spring down. As it drags the spring down, what will happen is the spring will extend to a new length. Let's label this length, this length over here. Let's say it's F over here, lowercase f. So this lowercase f is going to be equal to the final length. Okay. Um, that object which is attached to the end of the spring, that is obviously be going to be supplying a force. So this is going to provide the force, pulling it downwards over here. Right, so now what we're going to do is this. We know that we get a final length, we have an initial length here. If I was to ask you what is the extension of the spring, what would you say? Well, the extension of the spring can be calculated by taking the final length, subtracting the initial length, and it would tell me the extension. So in order to work at the extension of the spring, you can put that down here, the extension of a spring, so the extension of a spring is equal to the final length minus the initial length over here, minus the initial length over here, final length minus the initial length over here. Okay, and we're going to give extension the symbol of lowercase e, lowercase e. So that's going to be the extension of the spring. And okay, I can add it to a diagram to make it easier for you. So obviously the original length is roughly here and the extension of the spring will obviously be whatever this is over here, E. There we go, that's the extension of the spring here. Okay, so now we're gonna do this. We're gonna plot a graph of the results. So we're gonna keep increasing the force, yeah, at the end of the spring. So let's increase the force, so over here, let's put force on this axis over here. And we're going to talk about the extension of the spring. What do you think happens to the extension of the spring? So force on this on the y-axis and extension on the x-axis over here. What do you think is going to happen? What kind of graph do you think you'll obtain? All right, so from here we find out that as you increase the force, the extension of the spring increases. And it goes up in a linear rate over here. So as you can see, it's a straight diagonal line here. It's a straight diagonal line here. So this is the graph that we are going to obtain from our results here. And this is a very simple force extension graph from using a spring. And hopefully this makes sense to you guys that obviously the more force you add to the end of the spring, the more it extends here. Make sure that you are happy with this graph because we're gonna talk about it in a bit more detail in the next diagram. Okay, in real life it will look slightly different but for now we're gonna talk about them being directly proportional to each other. So we're gonna talk about the force uh, on the spring being directly proportional to the extension of the spring. Okay, so we have this graph now. Now we're just gonna label a couple of things on this. Right, this point, the last point at which it's directly proportional to each other, this point over here, this is called the limit of proportionality. So I've put down LOP here, but LOP stands for the limit of proportionality proportionality. There we go, that's the limit of proportionality. It is the last point at which force is directly proportional to the extension. And here it is. The extension of the spring is directly proportional to the force applied to the spring, up to the limit of proportionality. So this is only true up to this point of the limit of proportionality. You have to make sure that you have that in your statement, that you talk about the limit of proportionality here. Okay, so from here we're going to do a little bit of maths. We can say that the force is directly proportional, and that's my symbol, that symbol stands for directly proportional, to the extension of the spring over here. So force is directly proportional to the extension of the spring over here. Okay, now let's move into symbols. So we're going to say that F is proportional to E. Don't forget, E is the extension, this is my proportional sign. Now, in maths, you can move from the proportional sign into an equation, get, we can get the equal sign, by putting a constant there. We can then say that force is equal to a constant, we're going to call this K, times by E. There we go. 
Right, so we know what some of the terms are, but there's a new term here. This K is going to stand for the spring constant. It is going to be the spring constant, everyone. So K stands for the spring constant, yeah? Easy stuff. Right, so K stands for the spring constant, guys, the spring constant, and basically, that is a measure of how stiff the spring is. There we go, K over here, guys, is a spring constant, it's a measure of the stiffness. Okay, so we've got the formula F is equal to K times by E. Let's talk about the units. F is going to be measured in newtons. Um, e is the extension measured in meters. And therefore K, the units, is going to be newtons per meter, everyone. Newtons per meter is going to be the units of K. Sometimes there are questions which you have to work out K and put the correct units down. Obviously, because I divided newton by meter, hence why it is newton per meter. That's the reason why I have K. Okay, and the definition we had earlier that... The extension of the spring is directly proportional to the force applied to the spring up to the limit of proportionality. This is more commonly known as Hooke's law. Hooke's law, guys, yes, and obviously in symbols, F is equal to K times by E. Easy stuff. Okay, so from here, we're going to talk a bit more about the what K stands for, the spring constant. Okay, so K stands for the spring constant. And basically, the spring constant is a measure of the stiffness of the spring. If it's a very stiff spring, the value of K will be quite high. If it's not that stiff, the value of K will be low. And look, here we actually have a diagram of force versus extension. And the question is now going to be the following. Which one do you think has the greatest spring constant? Is it going to be the first one or the second one? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, to work out the spring constant, all it is from this graph, it's the gradient of the graph. The reason why? Because... If you work at the gradient of this graph, everyone, the gradient of the graph is the change in y over the change in x. And what's on your y-axis? You've got force divided by extension, and which is going to be, look, look at our formula. F is equal to k times by e. Therefore, F over e is going to be k. So yes, the gradient of a force extension graph is going to be the spring constant. And you can see that this red line has a higher gradient than this one. So this red one over here, this one will have a higher value of K. So this will be the stiffest spring. This is the stiffest spring over here compared to this one over here. This one's going to be stiffer than the one before. And therefore, it has a higher value, higher value of spring constant, of the spring constant. There we go. Higher value of the spring constant. Excellent stuff. So now we have an idea of the spring constant, and now we know how to get the spring constant from a force extension graph. It is simply the gradient of that graph. And there we go, guys. We know that K stands for the spring constant, which is the measure of the stiffness of the spring. To work at the spring constant of a force extension graph, it is simply the gradient of that graph, because obviously it's the change in force divided by the change in extension, which is the spring constant. Okay, now test your understanding. Calculate the spring constant using this graph. So over here I have a graph of force versus extension. Calculate the value of the spring constant. Well, this is really easy. We just said it earlier on. To work out the value of the spring constant, I simply take the force and divide it by the extension or the gradient of this graph here because it's a straight line. So all I'm going to do is the gradient of this graph, which is going to be the change in y over the change in x, uh, which is obviously going to be uh, the force, which is on my y-axis, divided by the extension, F divided by E, which is going to be the spring constant over here. So look for this line over there. Let's just drop this down there, and let's drop this down over here. So the change in y over the change in x is going to be 10 newtons divided by, look, 5 meters. My answer is 10 divided by 5. It is 2, and look, the units will be Newton over meter, it'll be Newton per meter over here. There we go. And that's my value of the spring constant. K will be equal to 2 Newtons per meter. And that's how we do this question. Easy stuff. You can do that yourself. Okay, so last of all, guys, we're going to talk about force extension graphs in real life. So obviously, they don't actually go completely straight. They actually start to curve off later on. We need to label a couple of points on here. Number one, the last point, it is straight. We already know it. So, so this is going to be over here. This is the limit of proportionality. So this is called the limit of proportionality. So limit of proportionality. And the next one we're going to talk about is beyond the limit of proportionality. There's a, another thing we need to label. This is called the elastic limit. So EL stands for the elastic limit. Let's put that down over here. So EL 
equals the elastic limit. So EL is equal to the elastic limit. The elastic limit is the point that if you go beyond this, the spring will no longer return to its original position. So if you go beyond the elastic limit, the spring will no longer return back to its original position. So, uh, so let's put that down. There we go, so this is the elastic limit here. Um, okay, and as you can see, I've shaded this part of the graph. The reason why is because this area in which it can return back, so obviously if you go beyond this point, you can't return back. This area is called the elastic region. So this is called the elastic region over here, elastic region over here. And obviously if you go beyond the elastic limit, everyone, this will be called something else. I'm gonna shade it in as well. And this region in green, which is beyond the elastic limit, this is called the inelastic region. This is the inelastic region. So this region over here is called inelastic. Uh, sometimes it might also be called plastic behavior, everyone, yes? So the region before the elastic limit, the spring will return back to its original position. But if you go keep on extending it and you apply too much force, the spring will no longer return back to its original position. And we can say that the spring has now become deformed. So the spring is now deformed. So spring is deformed. And there we go. The spring is deformed if we go past the elastic limit. So if you go beyond the elastic limit, the spring will be deformed. Okay, there's one more thing to label on here. It's going to be the last point. So obviously if you keep adding force, force, you've extended it too much, it won't return back. Eventually there's going to be a breaking point. So the last point on here, this point over here is going to be called BP. BP, which is going to stand for the breaking point over here. This is going to be the breaking point over here. X and stuff. So look, as you can see, limit proportionality, elastic limit, and the breaking point over here. All good stuff here. Right, and my exam tip is the following. Make sure you know the order of them. So it's limit proportionality first, because it's the straight line bit. Then it's the elastic limit, which is a bit beyond it. And then finally, it's the breaking point over here. Make sure that you can identify the elastic region and the inelastic region as well. And that's it for another session of Surround Talk Downs of Physics. Make sure you hit the like, subscribe button to keep my channel going. And good luck in your studies. Ciao, ciao, and goodbye.